Talk to you a little bit about the faith realm, okay? The faith realm. And I think um, we have a lot to learn about the faith realm. So I want to make a statement, starting off, to get us, get us down this road. Faith is not the product of human beings. Faith is not the product of Jews. Faith is not the product of Christians. But all of them, at various times, in some ways, did walk in it. But often, most of them don't walk in it and did not. Faith is from the kingdom of God. It's from the realm of the spirit. Faith is a spiritual thing. It's not a natural thing. It, it, not, it doesn't have an origin in nationality or geography. You can go to Jerusalem and walk on the streets Jesus walked on and be faithless. It's not a location. I was watching the news a few weeks ago, and they were saying we're standing in the holiest place on earth. We are standing in Jerusalem, the home of all religions are right here. And I thought, you are deceived. <laughs> that might have been the point of origin in the natural where God birthed a spiritual kingdom. But it's a spiritual kingdom, not a location. It's a spirit realm. It's a substance. It's not a th you know, ethereal. It's not a mist. Faith is not a mist. It's not an idea. Faith is a substance, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the substance. Yes, it, is. it is the substance. Yeah. So I'd say that this podium is the substance which is holding up my books. Faith is the substance which holds up my declarations. Amen. Faith is vital. Faith is critical. Just because you're a Christian, just because you've received Jesus, does not mean you live by faith, does not mean you walk in faith. It only means you received your salvation by faith. But there's a whole world, a whole kingdom, a whole realm where faith has to be operational in order to receive the benefits that have been laid up for us in Christ. And I think that when we have boiled Christianity down to a confession or what is called a sinner's prayer, we have done a disservice to the world. People say, well, I prayed. <laughs> like, some of the things in Christianity are really sad. They're, they're, it's a present-day dilemma which has to be broken. We have to grow up, and we have to come out of it, and we have to begin to walk in maturity about what Jesus said rather than what religious people say. If you're bound up in religion, you're not free to live in faith. If you're still under rules and regulations and trying to qualify yourself before God, you still haven't discovered faith. If you feel condemned and overwhelmed, you're living outside of faith. Faith does not leave you with a burden. It does not, as Bill said, does not leave you poor. It doesn't leave you guilty. It doesn't leave you being tested. It doesn't leave you, leave you lacking. Faith embraces the cargo of the success of Jesus. And receives this mother load of amazing blessings which he made available, which you cannot make available for yourself, which you cannot earn, which you cannot uh, earn through the law. You can't get it any other way. Your laws or Jewish laws or human laws cannot give to you what faith can give to you. Faith is a persuasion which is born from a substance in the spirit realm which invades you and causes you to have the capacity to live out and to do what God does. Amen. If your faith puts you one speck in value beneath Jesus, your faith is inferior to God's. If Jesus is high and you are low, you are still living in a Rules and regulations, qualification and disqualification religion, which Jesus delivered us from by faith. Yeah. 
He gave us faith in his success so that he could elevate us to the glory of God so that we could walk with God once again. If it didn't do that, then we don't need Jesus. We already had the law of qualification, rules and regulations to qualify, disqualify, and Jesus adds nothing to me. I'll just go live under the law, and I'll sacrifice the animals again to cleanse myself of sin. But if Jesus Christ has come to do better things with better promises than what the law did, then I'm accepting that, and I'm moving on from the law of works to the law of faith. And I'm going to receive the cargo of heaven. It says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, that he, he, God, not you, he has blessed you with every blessing which heaven itself contains. He has. How do you receive it? By faith. See, faith is the qualifier, now works. So the second you think, well, that's all available to me, I'm going to try really hard. You are on the wrong track. The second you say, i got to pray more, you're on the wrong track. The second you say, well, I've got to get my life in order, you're on the wrong track. But the moment you say, God, thank you for what you've done for me, it is amazing and I receive it. You are in the faith realm. And that faith will begin to qualify you, begin to give to you a transformed life and will lead you into success. You will not stay poor. You will not stay broken. You will not stay like your forefathers, burdens and sins and problems and all the ridiculous things that came through our heritage breaks off. And Paul said, when it pleased the Father who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to preach Christ in me, the hope of glory, the hope of a reputation. That's what he called Paul to do. He separated me from my natural birth. So if you're a big Italian, you got the horner hanging around your neck, you still haven't come to faith. If you're still trusting a four-leaf clover, you haven't come to faith. If you still think a tattoo is going to make you worth more, you're still in the natural flesh realm, and you haven't come to faith. Oh, that was a quiet one. There's a lot of pagan things happening in this world. I suggest you don't be a part of them. Get a coloring book. And when you get sick of that picture, turn the page and do another one. Yeah, but well, Pastor Chris, it's not against the law of God. It's against you. God says, do not be like the Chaldeans, which groom and cut their beard for worship under their gods, nor mark your bodies as they do, but be holy unto me, says the Lord. People go, what are you talking about? That's under the law. Jesus said, I did not come to remove the law. I came to fulfill it. The law had no power to make you live it. I'm giving you power so what the law demanded you will do naturally. And God's calling us out of this world and into his holiness and his purpose. And by faith, by God, by faith, by God, we're going to do it. If you think holiness has finished, you are deceived. That's called the American gospel. Yeah. Yeah. There's no American gospel. There's only the gospel of Jesus, yeah, which says, be ye separate and holy unto me. Right. we got to leave all this stuff behind. we got to start realizing faith is the only way. Can you say faith is the only way? Faith. So if you lack faith, you'll do everything that the lack of faith will allow you to do. Yeah. Faith is not of humans. Faith is not of Jews. Faith is not of Christians. Faith is of God. Before there were Christians, before there were Jews, before there were humans, faith was alive in the spirit realm with God. And by faith, God framed the worlds. And by faith, God made man. And by faith, he called us to partner with him and become faith walkers like him. Isn't that exciting? It's really exciting when you think about it. Now, if you want a carnal existence, then you're outside of faith. It's just going to be just you and your carnal world and satisfying your carnal lusts and desires. So i got a scripture for you this morning. I'd like to read it to you. This will kind of confirm something that Bill read to, uh, was speaking to us earlier about uh, we believe that you won't remain poor. But this is about far more than finances. It says in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13, If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath and from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord, honorable. 
I shall, and shall honor him and doing your own way, instead of doing your own way. So just for the record, under the law, under the old covenant, the Sabbath was a natural thing for a natural nation, which was to rest from your works. In the new covenant, the Sabbath is a day called today. Today, if you hear his voice and not harden your heart, he will include you into the blessing. So today we are walking in a Sabbath day which doesn't end. And that means we have ceased from our works. Aren't you glad? See, you have to enter the Sabbath rest. The Sabbath is just like faith is not a place geographically. It's not a people nationally. But faith is out of the spirit realm. Sabbath is out of the spirit realm, and you have to embrace Sabbath by faith. That means you cease a way of life that measures yourself according to works. That means you never look at anything you do or do not do as a qualifier or precursor to God's blessing. You say, I am blessed, and I'm standing with God in the blessing, and you call it in by faith, and it comes. And that begins to affect the outcome of your life, the way you live, the way you walk, the way you act. Without trying to go to works, you start living out of faith, and your works change. So there's works of law to be saved, but there's works of salvation which come out of you. We don't want the cart in front of the horse. We want faith to lead the way so that the cart can follow full of all the goods of heaven, including you delivered from evil. Can you say me? Delivered from evil. Me. So he says here, so let's read it right for our day and age. If you turn away your foot from uh, from the Sabbath, which means that you're not going to turn away from God's rest anymore through your works, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, a holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, nor doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Wow. There's a big secret right there. If you do that, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. What do you do? Hug him? How do you delight yourself in the Lord? In other words, he says, my word is my bond. Jesus says, if you walk in the truth, the truth will set you free. If you join yourself to my word, then you'll be my disciples in action. Okay, so the word of God represents God himself more than any other thing. There's nothing you can identify that identifies God more than God's word, which empowers his spirit to operationally go into effect in your life. Okay, so his word. So I delight myself in the Lord. I delight myself in what? His word. Are we together? Yeah. Okay, so you delight yourself in the word of God. That's how you delight yourself in the Lord. Let's read that. It gets good. So he says, not finding, uh, n- not speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of of Jacob. Who's Jacob? The heel catcher. Remember Jacob grabbed Esau's heel. Jacob, uh, um, Esau was born first, but before he left the womb, Jacob latched onto his heel. And it says they were born together. It's, and you think, well, what's that all about? Because God said, I'm going to bless the one who has faith in me. And the heel catcher reached down and says, you're not having the firstborn blessing without me. It's an amazing statement. This is about Jesus and Adam. And Jesus grabs the foot of Adam and says, no, sir, not without me. And Jesus carries the ultimate blessing in God because he is the heel catcher. Jacob, Israel, who became Israel, the people who, so they rule as God. Wow, that's amazing. So listen to how it says it here. This is amazing. He says, so, (laughs) he will feed you with the heritage of the heel catcher. Your father, the mouth of the Lord, has spoken. Can you see it? So, I think you should just start saying God's words. We're going to ride the high hills 
of the Lord's delight. <laughs> well, what's that? Let it be whatever you need it to be. Stop putting restrictors on what God wants to accomplish in your life. You know, during worship this morning, I don't know, there was something Katrina you did there in that song, just whew, the whole spirit realm opened up. And then the other girls started piling on. Pretty soon I was getting lost. And you, the reality of the kingdom of God just starts to overwhelm me. I saw my whole life all the way back. And I'm like, whoa, here we go. This is Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. She's in a house flying back or something. I don't know. And I started seeing way back when I first learned a revelation in 1987. And it sparked something in my heart. I couldn't even explain it. I saw it. It was a spiritual faith impartation that I couldn't even talk about. I didn't know how to describe it. I just knew it was true. I'm here to tell you the gospel of Jesus Christ is not a doctrine. It is a manifestation of a substance out of the kingdom of God. It's a substance. It's a reality. And that substance left the preacher's mouth and entered my heart and my heart was forever touched by the substance of that faith. Yeah. And I had to go and learn the Bible so I could talk about the substance that I received. Yeah. Faith is bigger than what you're believing, what you're thinking, what you're meditating. Faith is the substance yeah. of the thing you're thinking about. Yeah. It's the reality in the spirit realm. So remember Jesus said that uh, I'm going to go away and my kingdom's coming. I'm going to bring my kingdom and we think, what's the kingdom of God? Well, the word kingdom in the Greek, I've been trying to tell you this for a while. I'm hoping you hear it this time. Uh, it's, the word kingdom means realm. The realm of God. So where's the realm of God? Well, the realm of God is everywhere he rules. And that's a faith realm, not a carnal realm. So when you're in the carnal mind, it's impossible to please God because he doesn't rule that realm. He rules the faith realm. Now, he's put up the parameters in the natural realm, but he doesn't rule there. That's why when Adam left his spiritual inheritance and ate of the tree to try to become like the God he was already like because he was deceived, he left the spirit realm and went into the natural realm, and then God said, Adam, where are you? Now, God doesn't mince words. He wasn't making something up just kind of like some kind of a phrase. Where are you? Like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, he doesn't talk that way. Never in the Bible does God talk that way. It's because he didn't know where he was because he was in a space where God doesn't exist. It's called carnality. It's called self-centeredness. It's called about me spirit. Me! They chose their own. And it was outside of him. It doesn't mean that it isn't governed by the principles he's established in the earth, but he is not there. And then when you're there, it is impossible to please God. Can you say impossible? impossible? That's pretty strong. But by faith, by God, we can please God. How? We receive the finished work of Christ. We enter in by faith to what he has successfully done, and we immediately become a pleasure to God. You don't have to go backwards and fix your problems. So this morning when I was going backwards and I was seeing all my life, I saw the successes of the spark coming into me, the substance of faith, and then I saw failures, and then I saw successes. I could even quote to you some of the things that were shown to me, mistakes I made. as a leader, in the church. And it was like, normally people get vexed when they see that stuff. And I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. I was that way. That's what you set me free from. And that's how I was. And that's how I was. And that's how I was. I can show you all of my forefathers' problems in my life. Manifestly coming through me in the body of Christ, causing trouble for other people. So if it affected you, sorry about that. Uh, but you need these things so that you can learn what real faith does. It doesn't bail out when problems come. Otherwise, there'd be no marriages. Right. Amen. 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 Okay. So I was going through that this morning. I'm like, wow. And I started realizing I am strong today because I went through weakness then. 
because the things I did wrong then, and God revealed it to me, and he corrected it with his word, and I adhered to and delighted myself in the Lord, and then he made me dance on the hills. I said, I realized, oh my gosh, this scripture is true. I, I'm a partaker of this scripture. I delighted myself in the Lord. I put off Adam. I put off the carnal. I put off that realm in varying degrees along my life. And as I did, he began to cause the blessing and the, the fruit to arise in my life. I'm telling you, there's a realm called the kingdom of God. It's the realm of God, and it is not in the carnal realm. And if you remain in the carnal realm, it doesn't matter how much you pray, how much you confess, how much you plead, how much you beg, and how much works you do to try to please him, he will have no pleasure in you at all zero and that doesn't change because Christ came the terms and conditions to enter into fullness have changed and that is Jesus put his blood on the mercy seat Jesus obtained eternal redemption for the whole world but the whole world by faith has to enter by faith, they receive forgiveness of their sins. By faith, they receive their healing. By faith, they receive their giftings. By faith, they receive every heavenly blessing that's been laid up for them in Christ. By faith. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see how important it is to come to faith? Yeah. Wow. I lost 14 pounds and my pants still fit. <laughs> so by faith, I'm losing weight. Boy, it does take faith sometimes. <laughs> wow. Isn't that good? Can you look at John chapter 4? Jesus was relentless on this subject, and so were his uh, apostles. They wrote about this continuously. I don't think there's any bigger subject in the Bible than faith. It's like everywhere on every page, it's, it's in everything you can look at. And he wants us to see it so very clearly. This is John chapter 4, and if you pick up verse 20, it says, this is the, uh, the, the Samaritan woman, I'm not going to read the whole story, I'll just pick it up, where he asks her for a drink of water, and she goes, uh, who are you being a Jew, give me... He's asking me for a Samaritan woman for a drink of water. And he says, if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for a drink and I'd give you. She goes, you don't even have anything to draw water with. He goes, I have water. It's a living water, substance. Yeah. And if I give this to you, you will never thirst again. <laughs> so here's a Samaritan being promised something greater than Christians today who are thirsting every day. God answers the thirsty. Just hunger and thirst for the Lord, brother. That's a lie. No, Jesus said, I'll give you something that will satisfy you forever. That means if you don't come to satisfaction, you're not in the faith realm. You're still in the carnal realm, still asking for what God already gave to you. Only by faith can you leave the struggle of Christianity to the life of God. I want the life. I don't want the struggle. I'm not going to live in the struggle. I refuse to live in the struggle. Whenever I feel like I'm drifting or I'm not doing good enough, I go, that's a lie. I just need to tell myself, that's not true. Now, I'm going to walk in the simplicity of this thing. Thank you, Lord. This is exactly why you did what you did so that I can have the benefits of it freely. Thank you. You can do that in the face of your own weaknesses, in the face of your own disappointments. Paul says, he's, I would more, most gladly, therefore, boast in my weaknesses so that his strength might abide upon me. Well, that's a big secret. What do you do when you're weak? Boast in his strength. You say, this is not of the carnal me. This is about the spirit me. Okay, so do you agree that you work to get money? Yes, anybody? Some of you don't work. You just get checks. But you get the principle. You work to get money. How do you get faith? You hear to get faith. Okay, you work to get money. You hear to get faith. Hear what? In the spirit realm. In the realm of God. In the kingdom of God. You understand? Whatever you hear in that kingdom... You can take it to the bank. 
Understand, it works. All things in God, not in the carnal realm, all things in God are possible. In fact, nothing is impossible to those who believe. But to those who are outside of faith, are stuck in the carnal realm as Christians who won't delight themselves in the Lord, won't confess the truth of God, won't stop saying their own words, they don't dance on the mountains. I got to dance on the mountains. Are you with me? I mean, really, think about it. Why are you struggling when you should be dancing? Why are you available for a defeated devil when you can dance on the mountains, which means government, the rulership, the authority mountains of God? Why am I subjecting myself to a defeated devil when I should be on the mountain of God ruling over him? Yeah. Now, what uh, Bill, you're in Revelation chapter 12, which is my favorite chapter of the book of Revelation. I know every single word of that, that chapter, and I can just sit here and quote the whole chapter to you because it's so meaningful to me. But the one thing it says is, when the war broke out in heaven, why? Because Jesus entered heaven. Yeah. Put his blood on that mercy seat. Right. Thereby obtaining eternal redemption for us all. Forever. Yeah. Once that happened, God said, get them, boys. And he, he released the angels of God, and they made war against Satan and his angels and thrust them out of heaven forever. It was not something that happened years ago, like uh, at the beginning, nor is it something that's going to happen at the end. It's something that happened when Jesus entered heaven with his blood, and he obtained it. Can you say he has obtained eternal redemption? Yes. Then stop trying to obtain it. Stop trying to obtain it. By faith, you say, I am now eternally connected to my God. That's it. It's over. That is over. I am in him. He's in me. And I'm not, I'm not wrestling and relitigating that fight. I love that scripture. It's, it says, so then the announcement was, now, a declaration in heaven, salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and his Christ have come. And we say, come. No, he came. Oh, Jesus is Lord. Okay, so the, the Samaritan woman says, Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. Here we go, geography. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Gosh, who's right? Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But, but, the hour is coming. When? Revelation 12. <laughs> when the blood hits that mercy seat. Jesus was still on the earth when this was written. And when he died and took his blood into the heavenly realm on your behalf and mine and obtained eternal redemption, this is when. And this is what it says. But the hour is coming now is when the true worshipers, can you say the true worshiper? The true worshipers, the true worshipers are the ones who are in faith, not the ones who are singing songs. What did you do to church today? Sang. Yeah. What did you sing? Oh, well, it was a good tune. It was, it was all right. Yeah, but what did you say? Well, I don't know. The worship leaders were leading. I said what they were saying. And Yeah, but what did you say? Oh, Satan, you're the best. Are you just going to say whatever they say? Or are you by faith entering into what you're declaring? I many times, even as good as these guys sanctify our songs and change them and everything, I sometimes still change words. Like that song it says, uh, Lord, you can move mountains. I'm always thinking, we can move mountains. So I realize by faith I am what he is and he is what I am. And now what he can do, I can do and I can move mountains. In fact, it says in Mark chapter 23, right? It says, uh, if you have faith as great a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the seed. It will by no means not obey you. That's not Jesus. That's us. Can you say us? Okay, so that means we are living big time in the carnal realm. 
Because most of the mountains of our life, we say, Pastor, help. <laughs> we don't say mountain, move. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, let that wash over you a little bit. Let that wash over you. Did you say mountain, move first? Or did you run for pastor first? Now, look, if you need help and you don't know what to do, run. We'll receive you. They did it for me. I'll do it for you. Well, I'll let Mark do it for you. <laughs> Bill, it's all you. Isn't Bill amazing? This man has become a man of the word. Man, I'm telling you what. Wow. I got a question from Pakistan the other day. And this guy, I thought, oh, gosh, I may have to sit down and write all this response. Because I get all these pastors all over the world asking me about scriptures and things. And I thought, oh, i just give it to Bill. <laughs> so I forwarded it to him. I said, hey, this guy from Pakistan, could you answer this? 20 minutes later? No, 10 minutes later, he sent me a book. <laughs> exact, and it was, it was a complex thing. It was no simple matter. And he had it framed out to the core. I said, I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent it to him and took credit for it. <laughs> so you too can become my resource. All you got to do is let the carnal realm go. Marge is worried I'll steal her scripture. I'm not, I'm not taking your scripture. She goes, you're a stealer. You steal everything. <laughs> so you just got to exit the carnal realm. How? Receive, receive the substance called faith. It's a transaction of spirit and life into you, not a message out of a mouth of a preacher. There's more behind what I'm saying than the words you're hearing. There's an impartation if you're willing to receive it. There is substance present to give you faith, to spark something inside, to deliver you from carnal to maturity. So you can stand in faith. God wants you to win. He wants you to dance on the mountains of God. See, well, if I had the authority of Jesus. Well, Jesus said, the fullness of deity dwells in me. So you think, well, there he is. You can't deny that. But he says, and you are in me, and you share my fullness. And I'm like, so I've been like on a quest for like 40 years <laughs> to discover how to tap into all that fullness. And I've learned one thing. Stop speaking your own words. Isaiah. Stop speaking your own words. You want to dance in the mountains? Stop speaking your own words. Stop pursuing your own selfish desires and delight yourself in the Lord, which is allow the word of God to touch you. And it will produce faith. So if I want money, I go work and I earn it. If I want faith, I got to open my ears and listen. And Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, everybody there had ears. In other words, he's saying, those who are listening for God will hear. Yes. So the only way I can have more faith is by listening for God so that I can hear beyond the words being spoken to the impartation of that which God's trying to get to me. Amen. Come on, Lisa, give me an amen. A little louder, please. There it is. So I know that your freedom... Is dependent on hearing the voice of God. Right. So if I come up to you and say you need to start worshiping big and dancing bigger than you ever had before, it's not because Chris Grenzi wants you to dance. Right. It's because I know God is saying your breakthrough is in the dance. Yeah, yeah. We used to have this porcupine little kid. He was, you know, he was, a, he kind of had a little bit of an attitude, but he was in the church back in the barn days. We we're in the barn. I don't know why he had a problem. We had a glorious barn. Carpet on dirt. <laughs> Lizard walked out one time, like that long, black with yellow dots. I'm sure my grandson could tell you what it is. Yeah. A mouse was going across the cinder block. His tail was hanging down, and we were like, so just pay attention to the word. If you can see me, 
You'll receive a double anointing, says Elijah to Elisha. And the whirlwind and the chariots and the things started to happen and distractions all around. But he says, my father! And he saw him. He didn't get distracted with the angels and the chariots. And the mantle fell. And he had ears to hear. Yeah. You see, that guy didn't miss it. So when a prophet stands up here and he says something, you got to stop listening to the big time blessings and start listening to the ifs and what you got to do. Pay attention to what he's telling you you got to do. If you will, then I will. And this is going to happen. You're going, oh my God. That's fantastic. Yeah, but what do you got to do? Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't listening. <laughs> you got to delight yourself in the Lord, not in the benefit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. This is bigger than me. She says, our fathers worshipped here. Verse 22, you worship what you do not know, and we know what we worship for salvations of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the worst, true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit. Where? In spirit. Not in the church? Correct. Oh. Little clue. Yeah. No, what little boy? You said there was a little boy in the church. Say it again. The kid in the church. Oh, I, well, it's, it has to do with worship. So. Oh, okay, God. <laughs> it, it has, it, I'm going to do it. It has to do with worship. Oh, okay. Do <laughs> you know, one thing you got to learn about God is patience. <laughs> Marge has saved me from many of problems. Uh, well, it's like a politician. They'll say something. They'll leave that. They'll go, whoa. It's amazing. Then they'll go right back to it. And I'm like, wow, that's magical. So, all right, I'll do it now. Then, if you, It's about this scripture. Ready? Verse 23. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. So this young man, he's standing there like this. And he always on the front row. I thought, oh, I almost wanted to say, get to the back if you're not going to do something. It's like, you want to play football, put on a uniform, you know. But he's standing there. So I snuck up behind him. Margie's lead worship, CD, 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 C, G, C, D, G, C, D, G, C, D. It was all our songs. It was glorious. We had amazing times in the spirit, I'm going to tell you. It wasn't the quality of the music. It was the heart of the leader was taking us somewhere. And... Uh, and he's standing there. And I snuck up behind him, forgot his ear, and I said, all I got to say is if you'll go radical right now, give worship to God and start dancing wildly in front of him, you'll never be the same again. And he goes. <laughs> he was like shaking. And then all of a sudden, he went ballistic. I mean, he was like <laughs> spinning the tears. I thought, how do you go from this to that? But he heard by faith, and it delivered him from his forefathers' claim upon his life. It delivered him from the workers who were trying to control his thoughts. It delivered him from the media, which is trying to tell him that God is dead. It delivered him from everything in his life, his poverty and everything, and he started dancing in front of the Lord, and he never stopped. He ended up marrying this girl, moving to South Carolina. They have a whole family now. And I'm telling you something, that guy's a worshiper. Mm. He went from zero to 100 Beautiful. because he heard by faith. Mm. Stop waiting for a move of God that's demonic. Come on. Come on. That's true. My wife said it's true. You're thinking I'm a heretic. There's no such thing as a move of God. There is no such thing as a move of God. There is only the move of God, which is the faith move to hear him, delight yourself in him, receive his word, and enter into the inheritance. And that started 2,000 years ago in Christ Jesus, and it will not stop for a revival. you got to get out of your revival mode and get into your I've been revived mode and I have a water inside of me and I will never thirst again. 
Now, if you come to our meeting, you're going to have revival, and you're going to thirst and hunger. You come hungry, and you're going to be changed forever. It's like, I'm not going because I've been changed. I don't want to be changed. That means i got to go back. I'm not going back to seeking. I saw, I found, I have, I possess, I am. Can you say, I am? Oh, you sound a lot like Jesus. You sound a lot like Jesus. I am. He stopped trying to be, and he says, I am. I am the risen Christ. I am. Oh, if you were here, Jesus, Lazarus could have been raised. Well, he could have been raised. He almost kind of said, well, hey, you know, listen to anything I've been saying. <laughs> she goes, I know you rise at the resurrection of the just. He goes, I am the resurrection. And she went, uh-huh. I've never heard any man say that before. That is not normal Christianity. What's he saying? I've been born of my father. And he is eternal in life. And now I have his life in me. And you can hear the prayers of Jesus. He says, I thank you, Father, that you have loved me from the beginning. And that you have given me the same quality of life that you yourself have. Thank you for entrusting your life to me so that I can trust my life to others. So I can entrust my life to others. And the same life the Father put in Jesus is the same life that's dwelling inside of you now. And we say, what am I going to do? I don't have enough money. I am the resurrection. You have to begin to start to confront the lie of the enemy by faith. you got to use your faith to move mountains. I'm telling you something right now, Stephen. I can see another truck in your business if by faith you receive it. There are more opportunities than what are, are being tapped into. He has. Where's Karen? Karen, I saw you this morning. This morning I saw your face, and I saw Romans chapter 10. I saw it clearly in Romans chapter 10. Oh, yeah. It says, uh, in Romans chapter 10, I saw your face, and it says, the Jews have a zeal for faith, Paul says, but not according to knowledge. And then it goes on, he goes, God bear me witness that I desire the Jews that they might be saved. That means they were not saved. Right? It goes on to say, he goes, for the word of righteousness speaks this way. The word of the carnal speaks that way. But the word of righteousness speaks this way. And I saw your face right there. And it says, do not say, who will ascend into heaven and bring Jesus down to help me in my situation? I was like, what do you want me to tell her that? I mean, your face was right there. And I'm telling you, there's a secret for you that God is telling me and clearly showed to me. He do not say, I wish Jesus could be here right I wish Chris could be here right now. I wish Mark or Amy could be here right now, or Margie. Do not say that. Do not say it. And it says, but what does the word of righteousness say? It says, the word of God is in me. In my heart and in my mouth. That means I believe it because I received it through hearing and now I'm entering into faith, communicating it into my world. I'm saying what he says, and Christ will be in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great secret for you. Okay. Oh, that clock doesn't work. Oh. Yeah, 217, I don't think so. Yeah, it is. All right, so um, back to the original. Um, where um, the Samaritan woman said, you will neither worship me in this geographical place nor in that geographical place, but the true worship was to worship God in spirit and in truth. Truth is the word of God. Spirit is the, that is the substance. Substance. Do not come to church and put up with songs. Do not come to church and put up with church. Don't walk in here and say, well, I'm at church. Say, I am a part of the church. The church arrived when we all arrived. Yeah. I, tell you, I will not accept we came to church today. I am a part of the church. The church is the body of Christ. Uh, the body of Christ is going to leave this building, and this building is going to be an empty, hollow room with no glory and no power. Not unless you like carpet and walls. 
There will be nothing here. You say, yeah, but Jesus' presence will resonate there. That's nothing compared to his presence resonating here. The, the reason it resonates here is because we're here. You say, because I'm here. Right, you got to start seeing yourself as the answer and the solution to this world and not the victim. Well, Christianity's on the decline, brother. Okay, let me just, let's take this out. Jesus lied. Well, Pastor Chris, no, there's problems in this world. There's a real devil, you know. Oh, you mean the defeated devil that Jesus stripped and is in all authority over him? The one whom we are in having all authority with him? You mean that devil? Why are you talking about him? Right? So you, you say, yeah, but look at the trouble he's causing the world. No, the trouble in this world is Christians that don't believe and are living in carnal. When Christians start living in faith, nothing the devil does, does, he'll actually become a pawn on the chest that we can move him around. He'll be out of our way in a second. So I just want you to know, we got to settle this. Jesus said, through his word, to the increase of his government and kingdom of peace, there shall be a period of time that drifts down low because there's a division in the United States government and the nations of the world are really struggling to try to cope with ISIS and all these bro, Hamas and then oh my God don't forget those other guys Hezbollah I'm not trying to belittle the fact that there are murderous brutal people in this world but Jesus said to the increase of his kingdom there will be none that means that baby's been increasing. There was one, then there was 12, then there was 70, then there was a multitude, and the multitude has grown people. We are over a billion now, way over a billion. We've kind of exponentially taken one-seventh of the world already. Guess where we're headed? And it doesn't matter what happens between now and the next millennia. It's all heading up. I prophesy with Jesus to the increase of his kingdom there shall be no one. But the whole world is waiting for what? For the manifestation of the sons of God. What are we waiting for? Till Bush gets back in office. <laughs> How about Obama? <laughs> Let's bring back Henry Kissinger. Then the Antichrist can be here. You know, the church is confused. Our pastor said Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist. I was like. I remember I turned on the news. I looked for Henry Kissinger. I didn't even know who he was. I was young. And this guy with glasses there. Hello. Well, we must protect Israel at all costs. I'm like, whoa, he's scary. <laughs> Don't be confused. The whole earth is moaning and groaning and travailing until now for you to manifest. So you just sit in the pew and listen to me. Yeah, well, that's going to work. Our job as leaders is to release the potential in you. To get you to discover the, the ability of faith to work in your life. To produce beyond the boundaries of your forefathers, beyond the boundaries of your mom and dad, beyond the boundaries of your own present generation. You can be scrolling and Jesus will speak to you. You think, well, my phones are evil today. Well, all right, well, Paul said nothing is evil of itself. It's only going to be used for evil, so let's get over that. Stop picking an abortion. Get people saved. Rather work on the problem than fight against the effect. I hate abortion. Let's get it straight. I hate it. But I am not picketing, and I'm not sending money to try to stop it. I'm going to get the next person saved so they can hear God and never do it again. Because the Spirit of God, you can do it by law. Let's make laws in America. Where are you going to stop? I mean, it's like, if you don't get the heart delivered, they're going to find a way. They did it before it was legal. They'll do it after it's illegal. So you, you just got to get to the point where you realize, what is our faith?
faith for. Our faith is to institute the kingdom of God, our Father's kingdom in the earth to touch every person, every man, woman, and child, and hopefully the unborn, to touch their lives and to bring them into a face-to-face -face encounter on this planet, not a carnal existence, but a faith existence, because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Uh, I'll have to preach that message another time. You got me going, so... I have to end there. But hey, what is God calling you to? Let's ask the question. What are you being called to? What are you being called to? Pick a line. What are you being called to? What's your purpose? Delight yourself in the Lord. So, all right, so let me just make this one amendment. If while you're delighting yourself in the Lord, you see yourself on a picket line, so be it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But don't push your agenda on me. On. Go do what the Lord say do. Yeah. 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 The whole world's waiting for the manifestation of Blake. Yeah. Yeah. The whole world is waiting for the manifestation of Cher. The whole world's waiting for Karen. They have her manifestation. The whole world's waiting for that. Yeah. Now, to varying degrees, we are manifesting, and to that degree, we are affecting this world. But the whole world's waiting for Karen for the manifestation of faith in your life. The whole world needs that. There's nothing else. And so, what does that mean? Delight yourself in the Lord. When God starts revealing to you what you're delighting yourself in Him for, you'll see what to do, and you'll stop using doctrinal agendas of institutions and groups, and you'll start going doing what you're supposed to do. Like Philip was translated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he wasn't thinking about that. Hey, I'm going to take a Holy Ghost ride right out of Ethiopia <laughs> over to, hey, we're going on Ethiopian air two days. I'm like, I'd like to take that ride. And it's like, no, he was delighting himself in the Lord. He's telling the scriptures to this man who's in charge of uh, the Queen of Sheba's goods, and he's talking to this very prominent person, told him about the scriptures, and then psh, he was gone. He was in another place to do more work. Now, that might not be you, but you'll never know until you delight yourself in the Lord. Imagine, February 10th, you're delighting yourself in the Lord, psh, and you're in Miami. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, right? <laughs> but you're never going to know that there's a person crying out for God on the beaches of Miami who feels naked, because they are, <laughs> and ashamed, and you're going to preach to them what? The gospel of faith, not law. You're not going to say, well, if you change your clothes, if you cover up, if you honor God a little in your life, if you stop being homosexual, if you stop doing all these things wrong, blah, 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 you're training them in the wrong thing. Amen. I want you to know something about God. He loves you so much. He did something about your condition so that you could walk into it by faith. He will change everything. Your past will become meaningless. Do you hear me? Meaningless. He will give you a brand new life, and you'll never thirst again. Can you stand, please? Bill? He's good. He's good. All right, so please pray for the team in Africa. We, I love the way you summed it up about that cultural shift in, for women in, in Malawi. We've already worked on some of these things. Um, but I really think this is going to be a very significant. What's that? Only if you let me. Oh, no. <laughs> so Margie's going to open up um, the women's conference. And I didn't steal one of your scriptures tonight. Oh, that's close. I came right up to it. No, that's hers. <laughs> um, so please pray for Margie and Amy and Eve and Tiffany. Is there, uh, oh, but Margie's saying Christy's watching all the kids. Wow, that's a lot of grandkids. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, come on, lift your hands to God. Say, Father, I am going to walk in faith. 
by delighting myself in your word. I know that this is all about you inviting me into a faith walk with you. I want the substance, not mere definitions. I don't want to know just no doctrines. I want to know you. I want to know what's mine. You said, seek first the realm of God and his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be granted unto you. So, Lord, I'm not going to seek food, clothing, or any other natural thing I need. I'm seeking the kingdom that will supply me those things as well. They're mine by, by faith in Jesus' name. I am a faith person. I walk by faith. I receive by faith. I am not restricted by my natural man. <laughs> Can you feel? You feel your faith right now. You feel it. It's a substance. It's more than words. It's God bearing witness within you by the Holy Ghost. He gives you the substance of faith. Don't walk away from it easily. Don't turn your back on it easily. Make a decision right here, right now, while we're praying. Make a decision right here. I'm carrying this with me into my world.